Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin, I have type one diabetes and on Diabetech, I talk all things diabetes tech news and management. Today we're talking all things DIY loop. I've been on this system for just over two years and it's been fantastic. So DIY loop is a non-cleared FDA automated insulin delivery system. So it does similar things as to what Omnipod 5, T-Slim's Control IQ, and um, Medtronic's system. It has your CGM, talk to your pump, and regulates it. It is a completely different algorithm than all of those, and it also has a bunch of abilities that those don't, including the ability to use an iPhone or an Apple Watch, which I'll get into. I am currently on the path to change my system from DIY loop to IAPS, which I'm talking a lot about on this channel and you can learn a lot about uh, on some videos that are coming out, uh, including a podcast on Monday. I thought that I'd create this capstone video for DIY loop for a few reasons. One, it's been two years, so I think I've been using it long enough to tell you all of the things I love about it and the things that I think could be better. And then also I'm considering or actually actively working to switch to a new system called IAPS. Um, it is this nuts algorithm that basically there are people using it that never bolus and are above 80% range and people who do bolus a day 98% in range is not even like something to celebrate. It's just a norm. I've got a podcast on IAPS coming out on Monday. Uh, so stay tuned for that. You, you've got to see it. It's nuts. Anyway, today is all about DIY loop. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like. Keep in mind that DIY loop is experimental. It is not cleared by the FDA. You take full responsibility for using it and building it yourself. I'm not a doctor. None of this is medical advice. You should always consult with your physician before making changes to your health care. All right, let's get into it. First, let's start with some overall information. DIY Loop, it's an app that lives on an iPhone. It also has a tag long Apple Watch app. The system works with the Omnipod Dash or the prior model, the Omnipod Eros. Uh, with that one, you need this device called an Orange Link. I used to use that, but now with Omnipod Dash, the iPhone app connects directly to that pump. When it comes to CGMs, it works with the Dexcom G6 and the Dexcom G7. I have been looping with the Dexcom G7 since February, and it's been a great experience. I think in general, people are a little apprehensive about DIY loop. I mean, this is a system that's not tied to a company. It is completely up to you to build it and manage it yourself. And if something goes wrong, it's on you. Although there are Facebook groups that are very helpful. The community is incredible. Personally, in two years, I have only had two issues and they were solved within probably 15 minutes because the issue happened. I went on the Facebook group, I posted it, and then people helped me pretty immediately. I'd say within minutes. I think when you compare it to other systems that are FDA cleared, it really doesn't have more issues, I guess, on that side. If you're watching and you're on T-Slim, Omnipod, or Medtronic, I'd love to hear if you've had any issues on those systems and kind of compare them with my own. So be sure to throw those in today's comments. Now, let me get into what I love about the DIY loop. First, I said this before, it works with the Dexcom G7. It is always ahead. DIY loop is always going to be steps ahead of FDA cleared systems because they don't need to wait for the FDA to approve these things. People just build these features and voila, you have the Dexcom G7. Uh, it's been working super well with my system. Um, the, G7, the G7 has no sensor warmup if you overlap sensors. I have a video on that if you want to learn more. I also used the Dexcom G6 with my loop system for, I'd say, over a year, and that worked flawlessly as well. Sleeping with DIY loop has been so easy and so comfortable. And I think with type one diabetes, sleep can sometimes be a scary thing. And I'm not gonna lie, there are times when I dose myself for a meal and I go to sleep and I'm nervous. That, that, that nervousness may not always go away, but DIY loop keeps me so in range, gets me down from highs while I'm asleep, brings me up from what could be a low. Um, I experience lows very, very infrequently, um, maybe one or two a month. And of course, that's not just DIY loop. It's getting my, my settings down and my carb 
counting down. One of the coolest features is the ability to enter glycemic index. So this is something that doesn't exist on other FDA cleared systems. When I enter carbs for food, it also asks me what type of food it is. It shows three emojis, a lollipop, a taco, and a pizza. These symbolize the glycemic index. So a lollipop, that's orange juice, that is candy, that is a, that has a high glycemic index, and that's going to hit your blood sugar faster. Then you've got the taco. That is your mid-range. Uh, it says three hours for absorption into your bloodstream. That is going to be most meals. And then you've got the pizza. We all know pizza is high in fat. You've got cheeseburgers, french fries, foods like that. Those are going to take way longer. So I tap that if I'm going to eat a food like that. And then I put in the carbs that I want. I found that the ability to put in the glycemic index with the carbs has done a great job of giving me more or less insulin at the time of my bolus or pre-bolus and catches highs and lows better, or, or rather prevents highs and lows better. The fact that it knows, okay, Justin's eating 50 grams, but it's 50 grams that are going to hit him immediately because it's candy it's going to be more aggressive. It is more aggressive and gives me more insulin ahead of time and then kind of knows what to expect. With that, and this is something that could, that an issue, I guess, which is for my next section. Sometimes if you put the incorrect glycemic index, it's going to say, all right, well, Justin put in that it was a high glycemic index. It should have all been absorbed in like 30 minutes he put 50 grams, but we only detected 20 grams. So it's just going to assume, oh, well, he messed up. There were no other 30 grams, which isn't true. Maybe the glycemic index was actually lower than I anticipated, and that can get you into trouble sometimes on the system. So I learn from mistakes. If I put high glycemic index for something and it messed up, then maybe next time I'll, instead of hitting that lollipop, I'll hit the taco. And I think the biggest feature of DIY Loop is the ability to just use your phone. Currently, the Omnipod 5 has an iPhone app coming. It's not here yet. Uh, then the T-Slim does have an iPhone app. Um, so other systems are catching up with DIY Loop, but currently it does have the iPhone app. And it also has that Apple Watch app, which no other system has. On the Apple Watch app, you have the ability to see your chart enter in carbs, bolus, and also put on some overrides, which leads me into the next feature that I really love, which are overrides. The first one is there is a pre-meal preset. This allows you to tap the button and it will lower your range for about an hour in anticipation of you going to eat. So if I'm going to go down the block and get some food, I put that on. It's going, my system's going to start bringing me down to a lower range. I think I have it set to 80, 90, 80 to 90 milligrams per deciliter. That means that over that, you know, next 30 minutes as I head there, it's bringing me much lower, but to a safe level. And then when I eat, it already has a head start of insulin in my system, or I'm at a lower range so that I, maybe don't spike as much as I would have. So that's a great feature. Then there's overrides, and these get their entire own tab. Overrides allow you to set a, a different basal insulin, which is the basal that's given to you over a long period of time. You can set a percentage, so you can give yourself less or more. And then it also gives you the ability to change your range. These are fantastic if you're working out. So I have a weightlifting option, and this one lowers the amount of insulin that's going into my bloodstream, I think by about 20%. It also raises my range, and this often prevents me from having lows. I have a running override. I also have an override for when I'm drinking and I'm about to go to sleep. I have a, an override for dancing, which just sets my range higher because often I'll go out dancing, I'll forget I'm working out, and uh, then I go low. And these often prevent me from even coming close to having a low. And when I go to work out, I turn an override on about 45 minutes to an hour prior to working out because the system and your body needs time to like get rid of insulin in the body over that period of time. Otherwise, you'll have insulin left on board and you'll still go low. So that's super important. But overrides have completely changed the game and the fact that there aren't just one or two options like FDA cleared systems and I can create as many as I want, super powerful. Another thing that's so great about DIY Loop is just 
Compatibility. Because DIY Loop is an open source platform, it can connect to other open source platforms or other platforms that are inviting of your data from your pump and your CGM. So there's Night Scout, which is basically a conduit to bring all of that pump and CGM data to other places, kind of like the devices behind me, the Sugar Pixel and the Tidbit. Those can use a Night Scout link. Uh, the one on the bottom needs a Night Scout link to work. The one on top, Sugar Pixel, can work with like a Dexcom login or a Libre login. But Night Scout is another feature. Uh, it also brings it to other apps. Uh, specifically, there's Gluru, which I've talked on this uh, talked about on this channel. Now let's get into some of the parts of Loop that um, that could be better or that I don't like about it. And the first one is, and this is a big one, the pump and the CGM don't connect directly together. They have to connect to the phone. So your pump goes to the phone, your CGM goes to the phone, then the phone tells your pump what to do. Whereas on the T-Slim and the Omnipod 5, um, and I assume the Medtronic, correct me if I'm wrong, those have the pump and the CGM talk directly to each other. Meaning, if you go swimming or you're running around away from your phone, they're doing their thing. The CGM is telling the pump what your sugar readings are. The CGM doesn't need a phone to send that information to. Yeah, you may not get alerts, or maybe you do get alerts. I, I'm sure you do get alerts, actually. Your, your T-Slim probably still shows. Tell me, T-Slim people, if your phone's away from you, does the T-Slim still show your CGM readings when you're away from your phone? I need to know that. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, the fact that I need to travel everywhere with my phone because otherwise my pump won't connect to my CGM, that's an issue, but it's not something that's really going to go away in the DIY space because it's so dependent on the phone. And currently, the Omnipod 5, at least, doesn't work with DIY systems, including Loop. So, and that's the device that has the ability to connect directly to a CGM. Another big one, and I'm sure you all have issues with this too on your systems, but fatty foods still mess me up. If I, uh, not all the time, sometimes I get it down and I'm working my best to, to be better and I have gotten better, but there are times when I eat fatty food and I just get stuck in those 200s, high 200s. Maybe I go into the 300s for a second and, um, and Loop still has issues with that. And it's not as aggressive as I want it to be, which is one of the reasons why I am moving over to IAPS and experimenting with that. And I'm excited for you to see that journey. And I'm excited for that journey. I'm actually going to compare the IAPS with the DIY loop, do a whole video on that. DIY loop will eventually get you down. I'll go to sleep and then I wake up. I've been in range for some time, but it still, it still happens uh, and I feel crappy. And oftentimes I find myself entering fake carbs. Uh, if you're on FDA cleared systems, do you enter fake carbs? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear what your experience has been. I'm entering fake carbs. Um, I'll throw like 15 grams of fast acting carbs just to give myself more insulin. Don't necessarily do that. That is what I do. Um, and it has helped me. It helps me get down, but I don't like the whole putting in fake carbs. And in my interview that's coming out on Monday, that was one of the main issues that Magnus had with DIY loop is that he felt like he was putting fake carbs in all the time. Whereas now on IAPS, he doesn't do that. And he's in like 90 to 98% in range most of the time, which is just mind boggling. So I think that that is one thing that's going to really change for me moving to that new system. And then I'd say the last thing, uh, and this is really just like a con for people who like accountability is this is a DIY space. It could go away at any time uh, because Omnipod decides, oh, we're not going to make the dash anymore. And I don't think that they will do that, uh, but it could happen. Or, or Dexcom could be like, oh, we're not going to share your data anymore with these systems. We're going to block it. That could happen. I don't think there are any plans for them to do that, but these are things that are possible. And being in this space uh, and using these systems you could really be, I guess, vulnerable to the market just pulling away products. The Omnipod is getting rid of their Eros, which was the pump before Dash. And who knows, maybe they're only going to start making Omnipod 5 eventually. And then DIY people would have to work really hard to um, figure out how to, I guess, hack in to the system of the Omnipod 5. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully we can continue doing what we're doing because it's working out really well. 
All right. Those are my pros and cons. Let's get into the future of what I'm going to be talking about here because it's very relevant. I'm moving over to IAPS, which is this iPhone artificial pancreas system that has an algorithm that's just what DIY loop was in 2016. It is so ahead of the curve. The podcast on Monday, I have two admins coming on to talk about their experience using it, how it works. It has all these dynamic features that are constantly shifting and changing to have a more aggressive algorithm and keep you in range longer. And then it's a two-parter. The week after is going to be an interview with Anastasia, another user of the IAPS system, and then I'll be documenting my own experience getting on it. Anyway, if you want to learn more about DIY Loop, I've got a full review on this channel. You can learn more about it there. I've also got a podcast interview with Pete Schwamm talking about the origins of DIY Loop because it's an incredible story of how all these people came together uh, to create a system for the world that was better than anything at the time. But it seems now that DIY Loop, while it is still superior in many ways, it is not as superior as, as FDA cleared systems. And, and, and this IAPS seems like it could be truly the next step in my journey and possibly yours. So I'm excited for you to hear all of these videos. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe so you can get updates on all of those videos. You'll also, if you hit that bell for alerts, you'll know as soon as these videos come out. I've got videos uh, every other Friday right now uh, like this, and then every Monday is the podcast. It's not just on YouTube, it's also on podcast platforms. Also, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, if you learned something, it will help other people find it and it will help boost this video and uh, get into more people's get in front of more people's eyes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm Justin and I'll tech you later.